Hey guys, it's Stephanie from Janku, and today I'm going to show you how to have the graphic design eye without being a graphic designer. So I have Inkscape open, and I've just gone on my web browser and looked up a bunch of pictures of these cute little cactus. So I'm going to select one of these cactus. I want to draw or design a cactus, and I don't want to do it from my imagination because if I did that, well, that would be kind of scary. So what I'm gonna do is I just copied, I'm gonna try to paste it, and that actually worked, which I'm surprised. Uh, typically Mac, Inkscape on Mac is um, a little more difficult to work with, but um, looks like it's working for us today. So what I'll do is I have the picture, and I'm gonna start with the Bezier Curve tool, I'm going to click that. And what's great about this tool is you can pretty much outline, trace any object. So if I, you know, downloaded a, per, a picture of a person or, you know, an animal, I could just easily go around and trace it. So the, the best way to do this, what I'll do is I'm using a mouse, I'm just gonna click, and then you'll see this red line. I want to follow the curvature of the cactus, so what I'll do is I'm going to mark, I'm going to click down and hold, and as you can see there's this blue line coming um, from the endpoint. What that's doing, it's signifying the curvature that I'm creating, as you can see in that red line right below. And once I let go, you'll notice there's this green line that's tracing the cactus. So I'm gonna continue. Because I didn't, you know, uh, hit enter or return, this endpoint continues. Now if you were to hit enter, it would stop the segment. It would, it would just leave it as is right here, but um, I wanna continue. So even though I just hit enter and I stop the, the continuation of the line, that's not a problem. I'll just go back and click right back on that endpoint and it'll allow me to continue the segment. Now before I do that, it's getting a little difficult to see this line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this a little bit more transparent. I've gone to my select tool, I've clicked the image and I'll go to fill and stroke. And as you can see, opacity is 100%. I'm gonna lower that just a little bit. There we go. Now you can see my black line. So we're gonna go back to the Bezier Curve tool. And actually, first I'm gonna select the line, then I'll go back. I'm going to click on that endpoint, and there we go, we see the red line again. So you can notice that this cactus is not perfectly straight. So I'm going to select another point, drag, and let go. And you'll notice that little curve and we're just going to continue around the cactus. Now it takes a little practice, you know, to get these lines right. If you don't get them exactly as you want, that's not a problem. Just do approximation. What we can do later is we can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and you can actually select the different endpoints and adjust them as so. You can even edit the curvature. These little circle buttons when you click the endpoint allow you to edit that curvature. Um, in addition, if let's say you wanted to make this a little bit more finite, hugging this corner a little better, what you can do is you can actually add an endpoint. So we have an endpoint here and here um, but what we, or node actually, I'll call it a node. And I do that by insert new node. I'm gonna click that and I'm going to double click where I want a new node. And as you can see, it's been added. And I can just nicely curve that around the cactus. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm gonna do the vase. That should be pretty simple. I'm going to make a nice big curve Go down here. And in order to make a segment 
um, like an actual object, you can just go to the first node that you created, hover over it. When it turns red, you can click and there you go. You got a full shape, which you can later go and fill in the fill and stroke, stroke window. Uh, you can add a border or change the border, whatever you like. So for now, we're just going to keep a border on there. All right, so we, believe it or not, we have most of the cactus done. You, you're going to notice all these little spikes here. What we can do for those is we can make little segments, or this is where the artsy side comes in. So you can make little lines, or you can make one little kind of shape. So like, I'm gonna make these little, I don't know what you wanna call them, little condensed stars or little flowers coming out the side. What I'm gonna do now, instead of creating another set of these little spikes, I'm going to select shift. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to click one, two, three segments. And this keystroke might be different on a PC. I'm using a Mac, um, but that's, that's the uh, key that you use to select multiple objects. And then I'm just going to hit um, command and C and then command and V. And I turn the cactus upside down, so do not do that. Instead, I'm going to hit Control C and I'm going to hit Control V. And what happened here is I accidentally <laughs> selected the image of the cactus when I copied. Let's try that one more time. And actually, instead of doing my shortcut keys, I'm just going to right click select copy, and then I'm going to paste. Yay, we got a copy, thank goodness. And I'm just going to make multiples of this. And what you can do, and you can, you can change the orientation by clicking on the image again. If you're worried about repositioning this object, and you're worried about, uh-oh, whoops, that's, I, I wanted to move that whole object. Just um, hit Control Z to undo. And you can go back and select all these segments, hit the right, right click on your mouse, and select Group. And that way, the next time you select this, it's all together. They're a little pack. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna click this again. This gives you the, uh, a way to shift and rotate the object. I'm gonna put one there. Going to do another there. I used my shortcut key that time. Um, on Mac, for some reason, uh, I use, I think I use the Command C to control on other programs. So every time I use Inkscape, I get a little bit confused which key to hit. So I'm just gonna make a few more of these. Whoops. Now you'll notice this little plus sign here. Do not select that. What, what that does is it actually it tells Inkscape how you want this object to rotate in, in relation to this plus sign. So if you don't know what I mean by that, let me show you. So I just put the plus sign here. I'm going to now rotate, but you notice it's not rotating from the middle of the object, it's rotating from where I put that plus sign. So generally, I don't use that, but there could be applications where that makes it very, very useful. I'm gonna control Z, undo, and I'm gonna continue putting some more of these little spikes. All right, so we got a little bit of this. Now, I want to, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna fill the opacity of that background image once more. And I'm going to now fill in these objects that I created. And I'm gonna do that by, I'm gonna first select the cactus. And I'm gonna take this eyedropper tool 
it allows me to take colors from the image. So I'm going to click that color. And what it's doing is it, it thought that, oh, do you want to color the stroke, the, the outline? Actually, what I want to do is I want to fill it. Since we're not outlining this image anymore, um, what I should have done is created layers so that you can hide this layer and then grab from the, the, the colors from behind. But for this tutorial, since it's so simple, I'm not even going to bother with that. So again, let me do that. It made it transparent. We don't want it to be transparent. And I'm going to play around with that color. It's not, I want it more cartoony. If you notice, I outlined this cactus, but I also outlined some, I, that looks like some kind of mulch. I do not want that. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to adjust it just a little bit here. And let me zoom in. I can't see those endpoints very well. And I'm going to move that right here. All right, let me zoom out. So we got this little cactus guy going. Now the vase is white. So I'm going to select this object that we created for the vase. I'm going to say fill. We don't want that green. So I'm going to use the eyedropper and select somewhere on that vase. And I'm gonna make some adjustments. This is also transparent. I do not want that. I'm going to move that right as so. Okay. I'm just gonna take my, um, my tool and I'm going to go across, make a little curve. And then I'm going to hit enter because I don't wanna continue the line. I want a sharp point here. And then I'm going to hit that endpoint and curve. And we got this little pot opening. Now I'm going to bring that here. And I'm going to fill it with this dark color. Fill in the transparency. Now you'll notice you don't want this to be over the cactus. So what I'll do is I will use my select tool to select all these images. I'm going to go to the objects menu and I'm going to erase the top. But now it's over the vase. So we're going to go back to the object menu and raise that to the top. All right, so these little these little guys here, um, they s appear to be red in the image. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to change their color to that red. All right, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go stroke and select the eyedropper tool. And we got that red. Let's increase the transparency or the opaqueness rather. There we go. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thickness to these lines. So I'm going to increase this right here. There we go. I'm also going to get rid of this border. And I'm going to edit this just a little bit. So you're going to make a lot of little minor adjustments here and there. I mean, this pot could have been, could have spent a little bit more time tracing it, making it look a little bit more, at least not lopsided as it looks right now. Now, if you notice in the cactus, it has these ridges. Let's go ahead and make that detail. So I'm going to go back to my Bezier Curve tool. I'm going to originate from the middle top of the cactus. I'm going to swing down and make a couple curves here. I'm going to use the eyedropper. Now I made them a green, but I'm actually going to make them a little darker and I'm going to thicken the stroke. 
gonna up it there, gonna up it there, going to up it there. And once again, it looks like this object is on top of the other objects. So I'm going to go back to the object menu, going to raise to the top. I'm going to do that with the pot as well. Now, this cactus still needs quite a bit of work. It just pretty much just going over and making little adjustments. But this is just giving you an idea that you can pretty much be a graphic designer. You can take any image off the internet, trace it, and make it some kind of little cartoony image. So with that, I'm going to conclude the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment below if you have any questions. And I look forward to sharing these videos in the future.